Hi everyone, my name is Moriam and I'm a film club reporter. Hi and I'm Will and I'm here and I'm part of the film club team. So it's all a big hi here in the afternoon. It is, we have a webcast in November. So yeah, this is our f uh, first webcast we're doing for November. Um, we've got a series of webcasts coming up all week. So um, first of all, can I say a big hello to uh, Norton Keynes High School that we know are uh, tuning in and watching. Hello yeah. to you. And anyone else who's got any questions, please tweet us in uh, those questions. It should be rolling on the screen as we speak. Now, on today's show. On today's show, we're taking a peek behind the scenes of costume designing. Yeah, and we are very lucky today because in the studio we have uh, Vin Burnham, costume designer extraordinaire. And also Keith Lodwick, assistant creator for the new Hollywood costume exhibition at the Victoria and Albert Muse Museum. Hello to you Hello. both. Thank Hello. you for joining Hello. us. Hello. Yeah. <laughs> now, uh, we've had a lot of people ask, uh, Keith, uh, what exactly is a curator? Well, the curator is really responsible for gathering together all the content that appears in the exhibition. Yeah. Exhibitions of this nature uh, don't really happen very often, so you really want to show the best examples. And so you gather together the costumes, the material, and then you write all the exhibition text so that when the visitor comes, they can read about what they're seeing in front of you. Finn. Which costumes do you think our audience will know you best for? Probably for Batman. I did the first and the second bat suits, made them uh, for Bob Ringwood, who was the costume designer. And it was the Tim Burton production, so the very, very, very old ones. But uh, most people oh, know them. Not that old, sure. Quite <laughs> <No, I'm> <laughs> <Yeah>. old. <laughs> 20 old mm. years. Okay. <laughs> We're about to watch a film about the exhibition. Any costumes of yours we should look out for? Oh, um, Catwoman is in the exhibition. Michelle and Pfeiffer. Michelle Pfeiffer wore it. Um, and incidentally, there were 63 of them made because wow. there were um, stunt doubles, acrobats and things like that. So 63 costumes well, for Catwoman? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was a factory. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Here we have a clip from the red, red carpet of our opening of the exhibition. Part of being a costume designer is that you try to study the world that's going on around you, fashion, politics, history, everything. I mean, the amount of research that goes into costume, you might just think it's any old dress or pair of shoes that someone's wearing, but the amount of research that's gone into that, you know, so it's good to break that down so people just get a good idea of how much of a creative process filmmaking is. It's just so much an integral part of the making of a movie, it's just all the pieces of the jigsaw get together. So I don't think you should notice the costumes, but they just work together with everything else. With your costume designer and your uh, cameraman and woman and your um, production designer, together you design the colour, the look, the palette of each frame. You have a little bit of a head start on the actors, but they, it's always wonderful to have their input and make sure you, it's so important that they're comfortable because they have to become these other people. And so, you know, you have to work with them to help them build that character. When you start working on a character, it's one of, it's one of your first ports of call is the meet with the, with the costume designer. and. It, it, you know, you will have started to make to form opinions about the character and started to emotionally plug into the character in certain ways. But, 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 a, but a great deal of work about that character is how it's represented on screen, how it's manifested on screen. I think it can be crucial to finding the character and getting it right. It can be uh, something simple. It can be quite a small uh, aspect of a costume, a, a tie or a scarf or a pair of boots or some little thing. In the rehearsal room, you're essentially not entirely there. When you get into the costume, you feel like, you know, it's the biggest leg up I think you get as an actor. I'm just looking forward to seeing the whole thing in all its magnificent glory. Um, all these 
iconic costumes, you know, brought together under one roof here in London. It's trying to reach young people who may be inspired to contribute in some way and, I mean, you know, want to be the next generation of us would be fantastic. Wow, there we go. Um, I'd like to ask you both. Uh, Deborah Scott, the costume designer for Titanic, said there about um, encouraging the next generation of uh, costume designers. So I think you've got a question about that. Yeah. Keith, what do you think is the most important costume in the exhibit? Do you have a favourite? Oh, that's a very difficult question. Having worked on the show for over four years, I've seen them come from literally all over the world. Oh. We have 130 costumes in the exhibition. Um, but I'm a sort of science fiction fantasy fan and a fan of the original Star Wars movies from the 70s and 80s. So to get Han Solo, kind of the, who was like the coolest guy in the galaxy at the time, and Darth Vader was a real, a real thrill for me. Mm. Mm. Uh, so have you got any uh, tips on taking up a career in the uh, theatre and film costume design industry? Um, lots. Um, I think the most important thing, if, you, if that's what you want to do, is to just try and get your foot in the door mm -hmm. any way you can. Literally, it's a cliche, but making the tea, as long as you're in a costume department, you just make yourself useful. Uh, don't worry about being a brilliant designer. That all comes later. Even the yeah. designers are, you know, the majority mm -hmm. of their work is practical. Um, just get your foot in the door any way you can. It's difficult because loads of people want to do it, but it's possible. So work hard. Yeah. yeah. Okay, Be persistent. I know that um, you've got a good question, actually, that you wanted to ask. Yeah. I have a question for both of you. Tim Burton says co costume can show people's emotions. Do you agree with this statement? If so, do you, is it true? Oh, yes, definitely. I mean, costume design is really all about storytelling. Yeah. Everything that you wear mm. says something about you. Mm -hmm. It's about your identity and what you want to reveal to the world. We all get dressed every single morning. We all choose what we're going to wear for a particular occasion. So even like putting a, a, a watch on or a ring or a particular pair of yeah. shoes can make you feel different. And really, that's what costume design is all about, becoming is, that yeah. kind of person. Yes, I it, it is. I, I say it's part of the script because you're helping to tell the story, so every detail um, matters. So Vin, how do you create the costumes? Where do these ideas come from? Hmm. Uh, well, the initial uh, thing is the director's vision and um, how he wants to portray the story and the character and then um, obviously you have your own ideas and it depends on the subject as to where you start researching but then crucially when the actors are cast uh, very usually right at the last minute um, <laughs> then that could change any ideas that you've already had because it's the actors character that and that has to work for the actor yeah. if, it, if, it, if you think it looks like a fabulous costume but it's not right for the part it doesn't it work yeah, no. good answer, thank you. Um, Keith, we've got a question for you actually. Uh, within the exhibition, or it could be for both of you, uh, which of the costumes do you think have stood the test of time and why do you think that is, if not all of them? Well, I, th I think the majority of them have mm -hmm. stood the test of time. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's the importance of costume design. Costume mm -hmm. design, it's made for a particular character to warm, be worn by a particular actor at a certain moment in the movie. The costume designer is not thinking this is going to be a global phenomenon or a box office hit later on. Mm. Um, it's something to serve the story. But costumes and characters often live beyond the film and become part of modern yeah. popular culture and mm. mythology. They can also ignite fashion trends. That's yeah. not really the, you know, the intention of the designer to do that, is it, no. Finn? But sometimes no. that does happen. You never know. No. That's the thing. Mm. You just yeah. don't know. All it, you do, yeah. every job is the best you can possibly you do. You approach every project and in exactly the same yeah, way. Yeah, and it, and some things that you think, mm, I wasn't particularly yeah. keen on that could be a big success or something that you think so was brilliant. So it's like the audience decide trace. what mm. becomes iconic. The audience yeah. decide what's yeah. become yeah. iconic. Yes, yeah. definitely. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so let's uh, let's move on to. I know that uh, you're involved in uh, making dress for Lady Gaga. I was, and yeah. 
I say it, how a performer moves in an outfit is crucial. And we heard, um, we've heard Deborah from um, the v and Museum saying that actors uh, need to be comfortable. But uh, here's one of Vin's designs for Lady Gaga, where the dress moved, but Lady Gaga didn't. <laughs> Wow, Lady Gaga, it Incredible. must have been amazing working with her. <laughs> what was her brief for such cr a crazy dress? Uh, the brief was uh, that she wanted to be a firefly and uh, the show was called the Monster Ball World Tour and there was an enormous monster on the stage and oh. it was originally to go with the monster but mm. she changed her mind in the end and she wore it for a different number. Um, I have another question for you. Was Lady Gaga's living snowflake costume heavy and how long is she allowed to wear it for? This costume? Yeah. yeah. Um, uh, yes, it was heavy. <laughs> um, and she wore it, I think she must have been it, well, for the whole number, which was probably in all five minutes that she wore it. Wow. Um, but it was okay because it fitted her like a glove and it was based on a very, very well-fitted corset mm. underneath, and so the weight was distributed. Uh, but it was amazing. Her heels were kind of that high, and at the end of the number, she went down this tiny little staircase at the side of the yeah. stage in the whole thing. Um, OK, I have another question from Norton Keynes High School, and they ask, how does someone get into film costume industry and what course or degree would you recommend studying? Ooh. Hmm. Um, well, uh, doing a course is one way in, good way in, because then you get to meet everybody and that is vital. Um, all the teachers are usually in the profession or have been in the mm -hmm. profession and you get to do work experience. There are courses, there's the London College of Fashion, uh, there's Wimbledon Art School, which does a fabulous costume mm. design mm -hmm. course, Bournemouth. Sometimes designers go via theatre, they begin and yes. they do a course in theatre design yeah. Yeah. set or mm -hmm. costume mm -hmm. in theatre design and then work in theatre for some, for some time and yes. then, then move into, into film. Yes. Um, that yes. way, that way is another route, isn't it? Sometimes. Yes, absolutely. It can be anything, there's mm. no fixed way. No, no. Um, it's just you've got to be persistent and yeah. Just get in there somehow. Absolutely. Go for it. All right. Well, before we move on, uh, can I, I've just I've noticed that you've got some of your design work there. Yes. And actual from Lady <laughs> wow. Gaga's dress. Yes. Yeah. Um, I brought along this sample. It just I still had it. It's just um, it was a test. Yeah. Always doing loads apple. and loads of tests for everything, especially if they're technical. And this was part of the headdress. So she came on, and these fans were like this, sticking out of her head. And then with little motors built into the headdress, it, they opened up Expand. and yeah. closed. It was operated by Breathing. two people, puppeteers from the side of the stage with um, remote control who made it work. Although she operated the wings herself. It reminds me of um, one of those, um, is it the lizards in Jurassic Park where their fans come out <laughs> yes. of their heads? Mm. Very much, yeah. very yes. much. Yeah. 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 And yeah. in fact, this was um, 
a starting point mm. for the whole look. Oh. Yeah. This moth yeah. that had come Can to we just show that to the camera end. so people at home might be able to see that? It just had this uh, fabulous, rather gothic yeah. quality uh, that she responded to. She liked that look. And then, you know, it progressed. I mean, this is, I haven't sort of organised this, but um, loads of kind of rough sketches. Mm. So you're constantly yeah. thinking of ideas somewhere. and jotting them down and yeah. developing it. Yeah. Over it never, weeks it and adding more. It changes every. Yeah. Day, every minute practically. Is there a point where you just have someone has to just say to you, right, stop, that's the end. Um, <laughs> you can't keep yeah, tinkering with it. Yeah, when she started yeah. singing. <laughs> when she's on stage. Yeah. But it's but the same with the costume. Yeah. You're working on it until it goes in front of the camera, yeah. until the curtain goes yeah. up. Yeah. yeah. That's as right. much you always yeah. need as much time as you can possibly get. And there's never enough time, is there? No, never. <laughs> <laughs> never. Thank you. Right. Um, also, one of your films uh, you designed for Vin is Batman, as you've already mentioned. Absolutely iconic costume, yeah. isn't it? And uh, we've got a clip here of your design. You're not the mayor. Things change. What do you want? Ah. The direct approach. I admire that in a man with a mask. <laughs> you don't really think you'll win, do you? Things change. <sighs> Meow. I saw her first. Gotta fly. There we have it, Batman. Batman's costume is all rubber. Do you tend to work in lots of different materials? Is that quite difficult? Um, it's technically complicated. And just a very quick acknowledgement to Bob Ringwood, who was the original costume designer of Batman and Mary Vogt. I made it for them. Um, very technical, um, involves a, a big crew, a lot of technicians, a lot of fittings. It's complicated, but now what was done in 1989, which was the very Whoa. first bat suit, yeah. is now easy. <laughs> yeah. You know, they're, they're now on to much more sophisticated things than mm. uh, that very first suit. Right, uh, just got to do a film club plug. So, uh, and this is the Film Club Teachers Resources, which uh, if you contact your school support coordinator, you can get these from our website, and it's absolutely a brilliant guide to Hollywood costume. Now, I know you guys had a quick look through this as well, and it's a great resource to, uh, to use at your film clubs. So there it is. Uh, get in touch with us, and we'll let you know how to uh, use that. Now, one more thing. I've been eager to do this. <laughs> I've called it my uh, webcast costume facts or fiction true or false round. <laughs> and oh dear. Play. here we go. Oh, you're going to play as well. Right. <coughs> the lion, the lion costume in the uh, Wizard of Oz was actually made from real lion's fur. True or false? It's true. It's not. It was true. Yes, they did use real oh, yeah. lion. Absolutely pelt. true. It is true. Yeah, well, absolutely true. Mm -hmm. Now, Batman's suit in the latest Batman film was made from 110 different pieces. True or false? Oh. Oh, if only I could text my friend who <laughs> did it. Um, it could be true. It's true, yeah, it's, it's absolutely true. true. Yeah. It's true. Yeah. According to Doesn't the internet. Doesn't surprise me. Now, you might, be, you might know this one because uh, there's a bit of a myth about this. Is it true that the full costume for Hoggle in the labyrinth was lost in transit on a plane to America and ended up in a <laughs> shop in Alabama called the Unclaimed Baggage Center and is now on display in their museum? Well, I ne certainly never heard about that happening when I was involved with it. But, but it sounds so knows? extraordinary, it sounds isn't it? sounds absolutely ridiculous, doesn't it? it? 
According to my sources, it is true. <laughs> so we'll have to check true. that out. Um, I'll ask Sherry yeah. Rising, please. Please, <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for uh, humouring me with my, my game there. Um, it's been great talking to you both, obviously. Yes. And really unfortunately, uh, that's much. all we've got Thank time for. Uh, keep tweeting in because we will answer your questions. The guys are here for a bit longer, so we'll, we'll answer your questions on Twitter. Um, over to you. Thanks for tuning in, everyone. We hope you enjoyed hearing from Vin Burnham and Keith Lodwick. The Hollywood Costume Exhibition is open until the end of January. Really good to visit and see these iconic costumes up close. Please do join us again. On tomorrow's webcast, we'll be talking to the legendary documentary director, Nick Broomfield, about slavery. Goodbye. Thanks, everyone. Bye. 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 Bye.